How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate guide to setting up Warzone for the best performance possible on any system. This is going to be specifically for the latest Season 2 update in 2021 for Warzone and will help you achieve the lowest level of input latency possible. And more importantly, with inside of this guide compared to my older guides, we're going to be heavily focusing on keeping your game as smooth and as stutter free as possible, as this is arguably more important than any of the other optimizations. Making sure that you have a smooth, stable, good looking and consistent game Game, with competitive settings allowing for a visual edge will allow you to gain more muscle memory helping you make more predictable movements focusing on playing the game more than experiencing a stuttery mess there have been many reports since the integration of cold war into warzone that there's been many more stuttering issues for many people general fps performance has been at an all-time low so with inside of this video we're going to be focusing on many optimizations in which we can make allowing for the best and smoothest experience you can possibly get as always if you guys do enjoy this video please do remember to leave a like on the videos it does help me out tremendously jumping straight on into optimization we're first of all going to be tackling the installation of Warzone itself. For this we're going to be navigating inside of the battle.net launcher. We're going to be navigating over to Call of Duty Warzone, navigating to the bottom left hand side and clicking on options. With inside of here we're then going to be going inside of modify install. Navigate over to the game content, navigate over to modify install and you're then going to begin to uncheck any options with inside of here which you no longer wish to have installed and you do not use. For instance if you're not playing the modern warfare campaign, multiplayer, spec ops or survival, uncheck all of the options which are currently checked with inside of here. Once that's been completed, select confirm. If you have made any changes, navigate to the bottom right hand side, select start update, this will remove any of the excess content we're then going to get rid of. It's also worth noting that to play Call of Duty Warzone with the Cold War integration, you do not actually need Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War installed. So if you do not find yourself playing the game or certain aspects of the game, make sure that you also apply that same optimization for Call of Duty Cold War. As you can see here, just keeping the multiplayer for me is going to allow me to free up 57.14 gig. Select confirm, select start update, and that'll then remove all of those files for you. At this point, we're also going to be deleting some of the config files from the older seasons, which can cause FPS issues. For this, you're going to be navigating over to the bottom left hand side, clicking on the Windows button, then navigating up to Documents. We're going to find the Call of Duty Modern Warfare folder, double click, go inside of players and we're going to be finding the adv underscore options.ini. This is especially important for anyone that's been playing Warzone for a while if you've made any PC upgrades or changes to any hardware in your system or if you've reinstalled the game or changed anything it is definitely recommended to right click on this file and actually select delete. We're going to be deleting that file so the next time we boot the game the game can automatically scan our system for our brand new system specs and assign a brand new better optimized file inside of our documents page automatically. We can now move on to launcher and game optimizations themselves. We're going to be going inside of the brand new Blizzard launcher, navigating to the top left hand side, then navigating down to settings. Starting off with the general tab, we're going to go on game launch, we're going to choose to exit the battle.net app completely. We're then going to proceed to scroll all the way down and ensure that use browser hardware acceleration down here is actually unchecked. That now moves us onto our brand new exe fixes for the game application itself. With the recent updates to Windows and the game, it's going to change whether or not you're going to be applying this optimization based on your system specs. So for this, navigate to the bottom left hand side once again, go over to play, click the settings cog, then click show in explorer. Proceed to scroll all the way down to modernwarfare.exe. Right click on the application, then navigate down to properties. Once inside of here, go to the compatibility tab. It is vital to ensure that you navigate down to run this program as administrator. This seems to be the only fix for those pesky DirectX errors whenever you change your in-game settings. If you've often found yourself frustrated because you've changed a few settings with inside of Warzone whilst playing it and it crashes instantly whenever you make any changes to the graphics menu, it's because the game is not running in admin mode. Now moving on to the EXE optimizations we were speaking about earlier. It was often recommended to have them set for all PCs, but now you only want to set these optimizations on low-end systems. For low-end users, you want to disable full-screen optimizations, select Change High DPI, Override High DPI, select OK, Apply, and OK. Once those basic optimizations are out of the way, what we're now going to go ahead and do is simply boot up into the game, go through all of our in-game options, and tailor them towards our system specs. Once you've booted into the game, ensure that your shaders have installed 100% for multiplayer. Navigate to the bottom left hand side and navigate inside the options menu. To start off we're going to be going into the general tab. Starting off with field of view. Based on my personal testing on three systems of three different spec levels, the sweet spot for FOV to FPS is going to be 90. So if you are a player that likes to play on the maxed out field of view of 120, I'd recommend going with a maximum of 110 instead. We're then going to navigate down to skip introduction movie. I like to enable this just to get in the game that bit quicker. Another change I would make would be to the dismemberment and gore effects. I'd actually go ahead and disable this, helping you maintain a much cleaner image with inside of the game in those hectic moments. Once we're done with inside of there, navigate over to the graphics tab. 
First of all, starting with display mode. Regardless of your system specs, if you want the lowest level of input latency possible and the best performance, go with full screen and no other option. And ensure that your display adapter is set to your main graphics card. Screen refresh rate is recommended to have maxed out for your monitor. This now brings us down to render resolution. This was an option I used to stress on highly for achieving better performance with inside of the game, but would come with lower visual fidelity. We're actually not going to be changing this option anymore, regardless of your system specs, as there is a much better solution which has been added to the game. The only thing I would recommend doing is navigating down to the advanced menu, navigate to your display resolution, and set this to your native or maximum possible. Sync every frame, vSync is going to be disabled in every case. Now moving on to custom frame rate limit. We're going to be setting this to unlimited for everyone. Even if you are someone that likes to cap their FPS and you wish to use an FPS cap, do not use the FPS cap method built with inside of the game as it's highly inefficient. As you can see here, we're getting drastic changes to our frame times and even though our FPS is capped, our frame times are all over the place causing a much less consistent feeling game. Using the method I'm going to be showing you at the end of the video will allow us to cap our frame time, allowing for a drastically smoother and stutter free experience. And using the method later on in this video is going to lock our frame time in, allowing for a way more consistent and fluid feeling game. Nvidia highlights should be disabled for the best performance possible. Nvidia reflex low latency. If this option is available to you, I would recommend setting this to enable plus boost for any desktop users. For those of you that are running on laptops, you may find better results going with enabled as this will reduce some of the load on the GPU. I'm going to be going with enabled plus boost. Whilst we're going through all of the following settings, on the right hand side of the screen you'll see a basic rundown as to why we've set this specific option for the setting, starting off with streaming quality. This is going to be set to normal for all system specs as this drastically improves visual fidelity. Texture resolution is going to be set to normal, we're not going to be setting this to high as this will increase our VRAM usage and introduce stuttering. Texture filter anisotropic is going to be set to high for the nicest and smoothest looking textures. Particle quality is going to be set to high, on the right hand side of the screen here you can see how much of a visual quality bump this will have alongside fixing a distant visual bug when you're looking at trees in the distance which are often vibrating and have strange bloom effects. Bullet impacts and sprays has no effect on FPS whatsoever but we're going to be turning this off. It's recommended to reduce visual clutter for the best competitive advantage. Tessellation is going to be set depending on your desired level of visual fidelity. If you want the best competitive advantage and you want player models to stick out from the background much easier, you want to set tessellation to disabled. But if you do want a nice balance of visual fidelity and graphics, set this to all. On-demand texture streaming should be set to disabled for everyone, as this offers very little to no visual impact whatsoever and can decrease your FPS. Shadow map resolution is going to be set to normal as this slightly smooths out shadows, making them a lot less prominent on your screen, allowing for player models to stick out from them a lot better. Cache spot shadows and cache sun shadows are actually now going to be disabled, as these can be linked to texture pop-in issues when you're loading into games. Particle lighting is going to be set to normal, as this can also help clean up our image for a competitive advantage. DirectX ray tracing is going to be disabled for absolutely everyone. Ambient occlusion is going to be set to disabled. Not only will this increase your FPS, but it will also flatten out the image, helping player models stand out from the background that slight bit easier. Screen space reflections are going to be set to low. The reason we're going to be setting them too low is that it actually renders in the reflection a lot nicer and way more smoothly rather than just having this blocky, horrible looking reflection. Anti-aliasing is either going to be set to off or SMAA one times at the highest. 99% of you watching this video are going to want some form of anti-aliasing enabled as this will really fix and smooth out the image of Warzone, allowing it to be much more visually appealing. If you are on a super low-end system and every frame counts to you, go with off, but you will have a much worse looking game. So SMAA one times at the highest. Depth of field is going to be disabled. Filmic strength is going to be set to zero. World motion blur and weapon motion blur are going to be disabled. Film grain is going to be set to zero. And that now leads us onto a brand new setting which is available to us for season two. At some point over season two, Nvidia is planning to bring their DLSS technology into Warzone. If you're on one of the higher end Nvidia RTX graphics cards, it's recommended to go with the option of quality, as this will favor visual performance and you'll often find that you do get the best FPS from using this option. For those of you running on some of the lower end RTX graphics cards, I'd recommend going with balanced or even performance. DLSS is actually in Warzone and you've set it up using the previous step. I would completely ignore using this dynamic resolution option 
option. Once dynamic resolution has been enabled, we then need to set up our dynamic resolution frame rate target. This is going to be set to your desired level of baseline performance. And this will depend on your system specs. Let's say you're playing on a PC which is able to average around about 100 frames per second in most Warzone matches. But when you get into gunfights in certain areas, you could see this FPS drop down to as low as 80 or even 70. Having your dynamic resolution frame rate target set to a value of 100, this will smooth out your frame rate by simply dynamically and automatically lowering the render resolution of your game to compensate for any FPS drops you may be experiencing. This can make your long range visual fidelity slightly worse in these experiences, but whenever your game is able to achieve that frame rate target again or go above this, your game will be running at 100% resolution at all of the time. For my laptop next to me, I set this to a value of 60 as I don't really want to be dropping below 60 frames on the laptop. For my low end PC, I also have this set to a value of 60, and my high end gaming PC which I'm recording on now, I actually set this to a value of 160. As for 90% of the time I'm able to achieve above this FPS, will mean that no matter what happens in the game, I will always be achieving a level of 160 frames per second. Just make sure that that number is a realistic number and which your system can often achieve. Otherwise, if you set this number too high, you will find that your game will look terrible 99% of the time when you're playing. For those of you that are running on an Nvidia graphics card and press Alt and Z on your keyboard at the exact same time, this will open up the Nvidia GeForce experience. For the best FPS possible, you want to disable any game filters you are using and also, if you can, disable instant replay as by turning it off, you can see anywhere from a 5 to 10% FPS increase. To turn it off, simply navigate over to the option, click on it once, then select Turn Off. As for the game filters, navigate over to the left-hand side to Game Filter. To turn off any game filters you find inside of it, navigate to the top left-hand side, then select Off. Once that's done, go ahead and exit out, then exit out of the GeForce experience once again, and you will see a significant FPS increase from doing so. Now moving on to some basic yet effective Windows optimizations everyone should be applying. To start off with these, we're going to be navigating to the bottom left hand side, typing in game space mode, then navigating inside of the game mode settings. After benchmarking on my high end PC, low end PC, and my laptop, the lower the system specs of your system, the better the performance gains you'll have from turning game mode on. You'll also want to navigate over to the left hand side to Xbox Game Bar and ensure that Xbox Game Bar is actually disabled. We can follow that up by navigating to the bottom left hand side once again, typing in GPU space settings, then clicking on the graphics settings tab. With inside of here, depending on your system specs, you may or may not have the option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling available to you. If you do see this option, it is worthwhile experimenting around and turning this on. In some cases, you could find that you run into some performance issues from turning this on, so do experiment around with this option if it's available to you. For my high-end gaming PC, I found my best results to be on. We can then move on to our Windows Power Plan. This is a very simple, basic optimization in which we can set for all PCs. For this, we're going to be navigating to the bottom left-hand side, typing in Power Space Plan. Navigating up to the Edit Power Plan option, with inside of here, navigate to the navigation bar at the top, select Power Options at the top, navigate down to the Show Additional Plans drop-down menu. With inside of here, we're going to be looking for both the balanced and high performance basic Windows power plans. For those of you that are running on low to medium end gaming laptops, I would recommend going with the balanced power plan. For everyone else running on any sort of desktop or high end gaming laptop, it is recommended to go with the basic default Windows high performance power plan found here. Once the power plan has been selected, we can then go ahead and exit out. Coming to the end of our Windows specific optimizations with inside of this video, I'm going to be recommending the ISLC or Intelligent Standby List Cleaner program. I recommend this program practically in every single one of my videos and for good reason. It's a fantastic two-in-one optimization tool in which everyone should be using, regardless of their system spec, helping you achieve the lowest level of input latency, improving performance, and also freeing up excess RAM in the background. You can find the link in the description down below. Once you've clicked on the ISLC link, you'll be brought to this webpage. Go ahead and scroll down until you find the big official download here button. The program will then be downloaded to your PC. You'll then move it with a folder on your desktop with an identical name. Double click on the folder, then open up inside of the intelligent standby list cleaner.exe. We then need to set the program up and this is very simple and easy to do. The first box needs to be set to 1024. The second box needs to be set to half of your system memory. You can find out how much system memory you have in the top left hand side. For me I have 32,000, so I'm going to be setting this to 16,000. On the right hand side you want to enable the custom timer resolution, navigate over to wanted timer resolution, remove all values with inside of here, then type in 0 0.50, then use your delete key to remove all other values, navigate down to ISLC polling rate, setting this to a value of 1000 for low to medium end systems and for 
medium to high end systems, set this to 500. To enable this program, go to the bottom right hand side, select start, then click purge standby list. It's then recommended to have this program running in the background every single time you play your game to ensure that you are getting the best level of performance possible. We can now go ahead and modify our game specific advanced options.ini, which can free up some excess performance on all systems. For this, navigate to the bottom left hand side, then navigate up to documents. With inside of here, go inside of Call of Duty Modern Warfare, go inside of players. We're then going to find the ADV underscore options.ini. Now at any point after we modify this file, if you run into performance issues or if your game starts lagging or the game just feels different or off, it is recommended to come back inside of this folder, right click on this file, then select delete. Once the file has been deleted, you can then go back into the Battle.net launcher, boot the game back up, and when the game boots back up, it will generate you a brand new, fresh stock INI file for your system, reverting any optimizations we've just made. To modify the file, it's very simple and easy to do. Simply double click on the file. We then need to navigate down to our task bar, right click and open up task manager. We can then navigate over to the left hand side and start off with renderer worker count. To find out the number you need to put with inside of here, you need to navigate over to your task manager, navigate to the bottom right hand side and find where it says cores and logical processes. You want to look at the amount of cores your CPU has and you want to half the number of cores. If you had six cores, half of that would be three. So for me, assuming I have 12, I'm going to go over to my renderer work account and I'm going to be setting this to six. Once that's been set, we can then navigate up to the video memory scale. We're going to be setting this to a value of 0 0.6. Once that's then been set, select file, then select save. Now moving on to GPU or graphics card specific optimizations, which are very simple and easy to set. Right click anywhere on your desktop. You'll either be seeing the Nvidia control panel or the AMD Radeon settings panel. Click on whichever control panel is there for you. To start off for Nvidia users, navigate to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview. Navigate down to the middle option titled use the advanced 3D image settings. Once applied, navigate to the left hand side once again to manage 3D settings. With inside of it, it's important to make sure that Nvidia sharpening is actually switched to the off position. We can then proceed to scroll down. We're going to be navigating down to our power management mode. For the most part on newer and more capable graphics cards, this option actually doesn't have much of a performance impact. But just to be on the safe side and ensure that we are getting the best performance across the board, we're just going to be setting that anyway. We're then going to be navigating down to texture filtering quality. This is one of the most important optimizations for the best performance possible. Navigate down to the options with inside of here and ensure that high performance has been selected. Once that's done, ensure that threaded optimization is set to auto and that your shader cache is enabled. Once that's done, we can then go to the bottom right hand side and apply these optimizations once again. Then lastly, navigating over to adjust desktop size and position. You then want to click on your main monitor, then navigate down to no scaling. Once no scaling has been set, go ahead and apply that optimization optimization, we can then go ahead and exit out of the control panel. Now that all of your GPU settings have been dialed in for both AMD Radeon and Nvidia graphics cards, it's also worthwhile taking note that you can overclock and undervolt your graphics cards for a performance increase of up to 20% in nearly every single game you play. This is free, easy and incredibly worthwhile for anyone watching this video if you're looking to get the most out of the graphics card in which you've paid for. And this now moves us on to hardware changes, checks and upgrades you can make to ensure that you are getting the best performance possible out of your system or what to change about your system if you are are looking for the best performance possible in games such as Warzone. We're first of all going to be checking the configuration of the RAM installed to our system. Whether it be a laptop or a desktop you're using, navigate down to your task bar, right click, open up task manager. Navigate inside of the performance tab, then go to memory. Under your memory tab, you'll then be able to see the option for slots used. As you can see here, I'm using four out of four available RAM slots. You want to make sure that you are using an even amount of RAM and not an odd amount, as this will enable what's called dual channel memory. If you're running an odd amount of RAM, whether that be one or three, you'll actually still be running in single channel mode, which will be throttling the amount of memory bandwidth available to your system. So regardless of how many RAM sticks you have, you either want to add a RAM stick in or take away a RAM stick to ensure that you are running in dual channel mode. When inside of Task Manager, if you find that your system only has one RAM stick being used, but you have more than one slot available, it is definitely worthwhile checking up on what RAM speed you're using and trying to find an identical stick on sites such as eBay, Amazon, or AliExpress, as adding an extra RAM stick to that to enable dual channel memory will drastically improve performance. On the flip side of that, let's say that you have three RAM sticks installed and you have four slots available. You will actually find that you have 
better performance by removing one RAM stick, leaving you with less RAM available, but because that RAM is now running in dual channel mode and not single channel, you will actually have more bandwidth available, resulting in better performance. Ensure that you are running your memory with a gap in between the slots to make sure that they are running in the same memory channel. Here is an example of RAM set up correctly in this configuration. Now here is an example of RAM set up incorrectly. Now moving on to CPU. For Warzone, CPU is everything. If you do not have a capable CPU, you are going to have terrible performance on the game regardless of the graphics card or RAM you are using. 90% of you watching this video are going to find yourself CPU limited. On my ultra high end gaming PC which features a Ryzen 9 5900X, I am also CPU limited. So your only options for increasing FPS is to either upgrade your CPU or turn to CPU overclocking. For playing games such as Warzone or Tarkov or other CPU limited games, it is worthwhile looking into an all core overclock. Many Ryzen users including myself out there use the Ryzen PBO technology for overclocking which favours single core performance and with that technology my CPU can go anywhere from 4.7 to 5 plus gigahertz on a few cores at a single time. But actually enabling an all core overclock on my CPU at 4.6 gigahertz across every single CPU core actually nets me around about 20 to 30 extra FPS in every single scenario or Warzone, showing you just how important that CPU speed actually is. If you're planning on any system upgrades in the near future, alternatively, if you don't have much money and you're out of a warranty period, even on older CPUs, look into overclocking your CPU. And on most CPUs, you'll be able to get around about an extra 20 plus percent performance completely for free without spending an extra penny. It's also worth doing your research on the motherboard and memory kit you have installed in your PC and checking that all of the speeds are correctly running in the motherboard's BIOS, such as XMP profiles, RAM timings, or even look into RAM overclocking. These are all things you can look into. I'll also be covering most of the topics discussed on the channel very soon, so make sure that you are subscribed with the bell notification enabled to stay tuned for that. That now swiftly moves us on to the last and final and arguably one of the most important optimizations throughout this entire video, which is going to be how to cap your in-game FPS correctly. This is vital regardless of whether you're using controller, mouse or keyboard, or on a high or low end system. On screen now are examples of using the in-game FPS cap and using the custom FPS cap method in which we're going to be using now. As you can see from the correctly capped method, both the FPS and more importantly the frame time is way more stable. It is incredibly important to ensure that you are capping your FPS and capping your FPS correctly with inside of Warzone as this will remove any micro stuttering you may be experiencing alongside providing you with that extra silky smooth, consistent, snappy feeling aim whether you're on controller or mouse and keyboard. Making sure that both your frame rate and more importantly your frame time is consistent will help you achieve that level of smoothness and fluidity you're looking for. To apply this optimization we're going to be navigating inside of the description down below clicking on the MSI Afterburner link we're then going to navigate down to Download Afterburner. Simply open up the folder with inside of here then select the setup. You'll then be given the option to select components to install. You want to make sure that Revertuner Statistics Server is enabled as this is the program we're going to be using to cap our in-game FPS. Once the program is finished installing drag the setup over to the side and you should then see the installation language for Reva Tuna Statistics Server. Go and select Next and install once again. Once both of the programs have been installed, we're going to be double clicking on the program and it should open up just like so. Once the program is open, we can then go ahead and simply minimize the program, then go to the bottom right hand side to our task icon tray. You should now see this small logo found here. Go ahead and double click on this. Once inside of it, we then need to add the Warzone application, so we're just setting an FPS cap for Warzone specifically. Drag this over to the side, go back into the Battle.net launcher, navigate over to the Options menu next to Play, then click Show in Explorer. Once inside of this folder, navigate up to the top to the installation path and double click. This will then tell you where the game is installed to, then select add on Reva Tuna. Navigate over to this PC, then go over to the file directory we just looked at. Once you're inside of there, select the modernwarfare.exe, then select open. Once inside of here, we're then going to click on the Modern Warfare EXE on the left hand side to highlight this. We're then going to navigate over to application detection level on the right hand side and select this to medium. Now for setting your frame rate limit, it's recommended to set this to a number in which your PC can achieve about 99% of the time. Like for my low-end gaming laptop from earlier on, the laptop is capable of playing Warzone at anywhere from 60 to 80 FPS and it will rarely ever drop below 60 frames per second. I'll actually get a better, more consistent and snappier feeling game by setting the FPS cap to 60. Even though I could be gaming
aiming it up to 80 frames per second quite often, it's better that I get less FPS by capping down to 60, as that 60 FPS is going to feel way more consistent. That's a lot lower frames, but it means that I can consistently be at that FPS cap, and my frame times will always be at that exact number, making my game feel extremely smooth. To set the FPS limit, go to the right hand side, click on the small box, input the value, then go ahead and press enter. Once that's then been done, we can then go ahead and minimize out of RTSS and boot back with inside of the game. If you are wondering how to actually see the in-game statistics whilst playing, navigate back over to MSI Afterburner, click on the settings cog. With inside of here, go up to monitoring. You want to click on the check mark for frame rate and frame time. Go to frame rate, then navigate down to show in on-screen display. Navigate down to frame time, select this box once again, then navigate over to the right hand side to text and graph. Press apply. Then navigate onto on-screen display at the top. We then need to set a hotkey to enable and disable the overlay. For me, I like to use slash. We can then navigate back inside of Reva Tuna Statistics server, navigate down to show own statistics and ensure this is enabled. Once all of that's done, minimize out the program and boot back into COD. Now, once you've booted into the game with your FPS cap in place, it's then recommended to press escape, navigate with inside of graphics, scroll all the way down to the bottom. We're then going to finally tweak the dynamic resolution option we set up earlier. For the best results possible, you now want to set this frame rate target to roughly 10 frames less than your FPS cap. So for me, I capped my FPS at 161, so 10 less frames is going to be roughly 150. If you capped your FPS at 60, you'll want to set this to 50. Now for 99.9% .9 of the time when you're playing your game, you're going to be at your FPS cap. Then whenever you do run into a scenario where your FPS is going to drastically drop or you run into a major stutter, that stutter is then going to be counteracted by the dynamic render resolution target we just set. And there you guys have it. That is the ultimate setup guide for Call of Duty Warzone Season 2 for 2021. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. If this video has helped you and you are happy with your results, please do remember to leave a like on the video as it does help me out tremendously. And make sure that you do stay subscribed to the channel with the bell notification enabled to be updated instantly whenever new videos go live on the channel. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. I've been Pangino and I'll see you in the next one.